Valentine's Day dance at Western Hills High School with her high school sweetheart. The two of them were at the dance, went out with some friends, drove around, cruised together, and then they stopped at the Ridgely Bowling Alley, which is currently the Sendera Center off the traffic circle. Um, at that point, they were parked in the parking lot, and it is our understanding that they were attacked while in the car, and that someone opened the door, pulled Carla out, and basically kidnapped her against her will. Rodney, her boyfriend, was left in the car at the time, and he was assaulted as well. And he went and ran off to her family to call the police and tell them what had happened. Approximately three days later, on the 20th of February, her body was found in a culvert near Benbrook Lake. That is when um, the real investigation began, because now they had a body that they had to figure out what had happened and who had done this horrible thing to this young girl. Um, for the next 46 years, a culmination of work from detectives from over the years, and, and there, were, there were dozens of detectives that looked into this case, they built a case file that was huge. It was tremendous. So when Detective Bennett and I took it on um, last year, um, it was a mound of work and it was a lot of information to sift through. But we had made a promise to the Walker family that we would do our very best. And so here we are today. just want to reiterate what Detective Wagner said. This is a culmination of efforts over the last 46 years and countless hours and time put in by prior detectives. And then bringing that together with current technology that we have available to us today has brought us where we are. And we do want to uh, point out and give thanks to Othram Labs in Houston who uh, utilized their whole genome sequencing to get us the DNA pro profile and use genetic genealogy to get us where we are. Thank you. Questions? Um, I have a question. Can you, um, was, was there one moment when you realized you had finally solved it after all these years? Can you describe that moment and how you guys felt? Uh, I, I think it was a mixture of emotions, actually. I think it was a little bit of shock, excitement, um, a little bit of fear because it's, you know, wow, this, this is really happening here. Because it's one thing to work towards a goal and it's another to achieve it. And this was a huge, huge goal. And it was a really big win for us and the Walker family. And we were just, we were just ecstatic that we could finally come to a head after all this time. And when was that moment when you got the call for the DNA company saying they had a mask or when did that come? Uh, pretty much, because up until that point, we wanted to be very sure that the person that we were going to accuse of murder was responsible. So we took very careful steps to not jump the gun confirmation. Did you ask when? Yes. That was several weeks ago. But I mean, at what point was it when you got a phone call from the DNA company and they said, hey, we got the mask? Or yes. 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 Detective, uh, looking at the arrest affidavit, it looks like um, McCurley had been on Fort Worth Police's radar almost from the get-go as, as early as April 3rd, which was less than a month after uh, uh, the, uh, the homicide. Um, so obviously you weren't there for all 47 years or 46 right. years, but uh, can you tell me why it took 46 years to finally bring him to justice? He was one of many suspects or people of interest in the case files. And we actually, the detectives at the time, had taken his uh, case as far as they could with the current technology and the evidence that they had at the time. So it wasn't until what we have currently that we were able to move any further with him. So although he was a suspicious person and somebody that could have been responsible, there just wasn't enough information at the time to make a direct connection. Had there been any DNA testing on, on the bra um, that was uh, found previous to when y'all tested it uh, this year? There, there had been lots of DNA testing on many of the items, including the bra, yes. And so it was just because it, it matched this one database finally this year that you were able to uh, match it? No, that's, 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 not in, that's not correct. Basically, when we had done testing before, um, sometimes when you do testing, you don't always get a full profile. This time when we retested, we got a full profile, and that allowed us more options available to 
seek out who this could be. And to be clear, you mentioned retested. If you retested the bra, you got the, the full profile. Correct. And, and why did you get the full profile? Like, how did, how did that happen? Just new, new technology, uh, different people trying different methods. Um, DNA has been around basically since the mid 80s, but there are continual advances in how they attempt to find that DNA and then also how they extract that DNA. So it was these newer processes that enabled us to get a full profile as opposed to a partial from before. Completely random. We don't see any connection between uh, our suspect and the victim at all. Yeah, he, I know the warrant mentions that he lived, lived about a mile away. I mean, is that basically the only connection that's found? No, that's not the only connection. That is one of the connections. That's, what, are, what are the other connections from back then? Well, you have the warrant. Um, from back then, I mean, they, he was suspicious because of a weapon that he had that matched. He was within proximity as far as where he lived. And he just was, that's why they couldn't make an arrest. They just did not have enough back then. But he was somebody that they were looking at. You had a question over here, ma'am? Well, because this is an open case and it has not yet been adjudicated, we can't really go into those details. So... Is there another way you can maybe rephrase that that I can help? Did he actually confess to this or that that's not something that we can discuss. Was the arrest made without incident? Yes, yes it, was. it was. Just uh, advanced uh, new technology, DNA technology that you're talking about. Are you hopeful that you can solve other murders from years ago using the same technique? Very optimistic in using this technology to move forward with other cases. Yes. Can you walk through what some of the early steps were when you did get this case? What you said last year? Yes. Is that right? What What were those first steps just to get caught up with that huge case file? We had to We had to review a lot of what had been done in the past, and then we began re-interviewing many people that were involved: family members, friends, any potential witnesses, and then even uh, there, previous suspects. Did more events come out of those those recent conversations? Uh, there, there were things that we collected that were potential evidence. So every little bit of information helped. What's the suspect been doing for the last 46 years? Uh, he's been working uh, here locally and uh, just living a very normal life and married and two children and just going about his, his life. We have no reason to believe he's divulged this to anybody else. What about the letter? I'm I'm sorry, I can't see. Yes, we did. Did that tie in at all? No, it did not. Okay. We'll take one more question, and then we're going to invite uh, Jim Walker up here. How does this make you feel after 46 years to be the ones that finally solve it? The satisfaction of being able to give the walkers the answers that they've been looking for uh, for almost 47 years is it's almost indescribable. And um, this family has been amazing for both Detective Wagner and myself to, to work with over the last two years. So one more question. Is uh, McCurley uh, a suspect in any other crime uh, that, that you know of? None that we know of, sir. Thank you, Detectives. Thank, Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome to stay up here. I'm sure, you're welcome to stay up here. Right over here. Yeah. Hold him to right. One okay, step to your right. Okay. 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 There's a thing about us. <clears throat> Hello. Uh, what's your reaction to the arrest after all this time? Honestly, thank you, Jesus. So, I just want to say something on the behalf of the Walker family. I like perspective. 46 years, 7 months, and 5 days. Or 17,053 days ago. 
Carla was abducted. And <clears throat> I want to thank God. I am so thankful for the Fort Worth Police Department. Um, happy. The feeling that I had when, when I was notified. The word that came across my brain was finally. Finally. After 46 years, five months and uh, three days, we have a name, a face, and we're moving toward complete resolution. You know, it's, it's, I would like to sit here and tell you, no, I never gave up hope. Um, but there were times, there were really dark times, and watching uh, the pain, my mom, went through, sorry guys, <laughs> but, you know, I can tell you, I, this whole case being resolved is a thank you God moment. I know people don't like to hear that quite often, but it is. This is a, a prayer that's... Uh, This is a resolution that's been prayed for by many people, a wonderful church, Monday through Friday, 6.15 in the morning to 7.45, I mean 7 o'clock every day, Monday through Friday, for years now. And I'm so thankful to the Fort Worth Police Department, the Walker family, we're so thankful to the Fort Worth Police Department. We've been blessed to come across many good detectives, but <clears throat> I feel like God put the right two detectives. Thank you, Mr. Walker. Do you have any words for this individual? On the case. Thank you, sir. Um, <clears throat> any words? We're praying for you. We don't hate you. Um, we really are praying for you. I hope that the city of Fort Worth has prayers for the family. Uh, it's, it's not their fault. Um, for the gentlemen, you know, we want to see justice served uh, with prayers and forgiveness. doesn't come uh, a get-out-of-jail-free card. So we're, we're for, fully committed to working with whoever we need to work with to make sure justice is served for Carla, but I would ask everybody to keep this gentleman and his family in their prayers. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. That's good. I'm sorry. And thank you guys for joining us again. Uh, Detective Wagner and Detective Bennett have uh, provided an affidavit. For anybody that's not here and that is a media outlet, we will be putting that on our media portal uh, to share with all of our media outlets. Uh, we do ask one thing that uh, as Mr. Walker and the rest of the family uh, are leaving here, uh, would you guys just respect our time and uh, thank you for just getting the information you needed from him up here. Um, thank you guys very much. Keep in mind, uh, Detective Wagner and Detective Bennett have a case that needs to go to trial. Uh, this is pretty much all the information we're going to be able to release, which is why we provided you guys with that affidavit. And uh, thank you guys very much. If you need a coffee, I'll... Uh...